Good afternoon. Let's talk about management. I got a question for you guys. How many of you are actually are using GP right now, group policy? That's about 85 and a half percent. How many of you have actually taken the joy and gone through all 3,000 plus group policies as part of a security review for deployment? All right, well, uh, I'm sorry you had to experience that, and we're going to see what we can do to help that out and as part of this talk. Now, how many of you guys are using MDM for mobile device management? Keep your hands up. Only for mobile, only for mobile phones. Anybody using it for desktop? Sir, we need to talk because I want to find out about your experience. Modern management fundamentally is about simplicity. It's about moving from this concept of controlling the checkbox to managing the scenario. And more importantly, it's about reducing the cost and overhead associated with managing endpoints. This talk is about the road to modern management. Because ultimately, the end of the day is truly a journey, which I would hazard to guess most of you probably already have started, even if you didn't realize it. My name is Dean King Smith. I'm a program manager on the Windows commercial team. And what I care about is device management. My team is responsible for our modern management story for the set of capabilities that we're building into the platform and also working very closely with our MDM ISVs to make sure that we have a great end-to-end -end experience. And so today, I invite you to come on this road to modern management with me. Yay! Now, since it is a road to modern management, here's a road. And at the end of the road is modern management. Why do we want to get to modern management? Cost savings, simplicity, great BYOD support, and, and excuse me, great BYOD and corporate on device support, along with a host of other reasons. But as my mother is fond of saying since I was about two years old, you can't know where you're going until you know where you're coming from, or in our case, where we are today. And we refer to that as traditional management. So let's take a look at traditional management. This is what's currently in use today for management of endpoints. For the 80% of the room that raised their hand around group policy, this is you guys. And this is us, quite frankly. Microsoft, we use a combination, but we are still managing some of our endpoints traditionally. If you think about it, over the years that traditional management has been in place, new capabilities have been added. More things can be controlled. More things can be configured. Some processes have been reduced. But fundamentally, it's still the same approach to how you manage your endpoints. It's tried, it's true, well heck, it's traditional. That's why we call it traditional management. And let me be extremely clear, like that's not a bad thing. We know it works. Most of your, most of your companies have invested significant resources into making sure that it works and it continues to work. So this isn't a knock on traditional management, but it does have a fair amount of overhead and a fair amount of cost associated with it. And I know we can do better. So when we look at traditional management, I would hazard to guess 90% of the people in this room are using something from this list of items on the, on the slide in your estate today. Whether it's Active Directory for identity, GP for policies, a third-party security management solution. Think about traditional management historically has been primary for desktop and primary for on-prem. Because if you think about it, again, it's it's been here for a while. This is back before everybody had mobile phones and Surface Books and Surface Pros and are out here with this whole work anywhere, work, work everywhere, <laughs> work anywhere concept. If we put this in the context of your IT lifecycle, though, because I'm a, I'm a big fan of setting frameworks so we can make, as we move forward, everybody's on the same page. So let's put this in the context of your standard IT lifecycle. Primarily, it starts with acquiring that license for Windows, or acquiring Windows, period. Now, this can, could have been through volume licensing. It could have been you had 25 people in your company, so you ran out to Best Buy and bought 25 bloatware-laden machines and then had to get those cleaned up and re-imaged. But that, uh, that acquisition process has historically been a bit complex. This is followed by deployment. Now, funny story about deployment. 
when I was in high school, actually, actually, no, no not the high school, sorry. When I was an undergrad, I had an internship on Wall Street. And one of the things that we did during that internship was the Windows XP deployment, kind of dating myself a little bit. For that deployment, we literally took an entire floor of the building offline. Like, I remember walking into the network room and unplugging the floor. Like, I geeked out because I unplugged an entire floor. Then we hooked up a Pixie server. Then we went around to every single machine, all 98 machines on that floor, and restarted all of them and Pixie booted them. And then we waited about an hour and a half for Windows XP to do what it did to actually reimage this device. And then once that was done, we went around and made sure they all booted back up. And then make sure all, then went around and double checked and made sure all the post processing scripts were running and all of our line of business apps, was, apps were being reinstalled. This process took about six hours. Had a lot of fun. We played, played cards and we were playing poker while everything was running and ate some pizza. But six hours offline. Now imagine scaling, and that was only 72 seats on a single floor. The firm I was working at had six buildings in lower Manhattan with about, average about 30 floors a piece with about 100 people on each floor. A massive overhead, this whole wipe and reload. We've heard stories from customers where they literally hire high school kids to take brand new machines, unpack them, pop a CD in, and do the exact same process. There's a lot of overhead here. There's a lot of cost there. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have, your image, you have your image built out. You have your systems ready for your end user. Now you need an identity solution. In most cases, this is Active Directory, which is providing your on-premise identity solution. Next is this whole managing, that day-to-day -day managing of the device and also the applications on the device. This is testing, this is managing, this is monitoring, this is compliance. And last but not least, we have update. Microsoft Patch Tuesdays, which I'm sure all of you are in love with and super geek to move to the Windows as a service model where it's always up to date. But how do you make sure that your systems are, have the patches that you want? In the, in the old world, which we're hope moving away from slowly but surely, there wasn't really a, this notion of a cumulative update. You picked which patches you want, wanted to actually roll out on your machine. So this resulted in, and I know a couple of specific cases, we did get CSS calls with the same issue from, all, from two different companies, but wouldn't be able to triage it the same for the simple fact that one company took update A, B, skip C, and went straight to D, and the other company took A, skipped B, and C, and went straight to D. As we looked at this data and actually commissioned a little research project looking at this entire IT lifecycle, we actually found something really interesting. 56% 50 of IT time is actually spent on that day-to-day -day management. So me being a program manager, I'm all about reducing costs, I'm all about putting money back in your pocket. It's like, hmm, what can we do about this? This is where modern management comes in. <clears throat> As we started looking at this back, in when the, back when we started thinking about Windows 10, we heard a lot of great feedback from a lot of customers, just like you guys in this room. How can I manage BYOD devices in my, at my estate? How can I deal with this influx of, of mobile phones? Like, what do I do about that? How can I have a single pane of glass that manages both my desktops, my laptops, my Surface hubs, my pick new form factor X that's now coming online. As we rolled out Windows 10, questions also popped up. Popped up. What's happening in the GP? If we're taking a bet on modern management, what happens to my existing investment? Well, short answer, group policy isn't going away. <laughs> group policy is definitely not going away. We want to respect that investment. And we want to leverage that as you move along this road and this journey to modern management. <clears throat> our long-term long bet is on modern management, though. So what we'll talk about towards the tail end of the deck is some certain strategies that you can use as you're thinking about moving along this road to modern management. So I encourage everybody to come out to Redmond. Stop by my office. You'll find this quote on my door. You'll find this quote on the background of my desktop. And you'll find this quote on my wall. As we, Satya talks a lot about, a lot about cloud first, mobile first, and mobile first, cloud first, and all of that. From a management content, con, excuse me, context, for my team, it comes down to a few things. 
For the end users, we want to make sure that we're empowering productivity everywhere. You should be able to take any device, anywhere, get up and running, and be productive with minimal overhead and minimal effort. This whole concept of take a device off the shelf, log in, and within a reasonable amount of time, you're up and running. For the IT admins in the room, it's all about ensuring that your systems are up to date and manageable from anywhere. For the, you know, the consultant who's always on the road that's never plugged into Corpinet, you want to make sure that you can reliably ensure that that's, that device is, not, is now not a security risk. And for the security folks, we want to make sure that the asset is secure and your enterprise data is secure. Features like Windows Information Protection, Windows Advanced Threat Protection, which we're continually, continually investing in. This is, this is kind of our North Star, if you will, when it comes to modern management. Now, while a quote is cool, the question is, what does this actually mean in, in practice, if you will? So some of the benefits that modern management is going to bring to bear, <clears throat> excuse me, scenario-driven policies. Again, we want to move away from that, I have a single policy that manages a single checkbox, and I can gray, gray out that single checkbox. But there happens to be 15 checkboxes on, on this particular settings page. And now I have 15 policies versus, I don't want my user to change any settings. I'm just going to disable the whole page. It's a great scenario policy. Again, we're going to make sure devices and data are always secure. And as we look at how Windows 10 as a platform, Windows 10 as a service, we want to make sure there's the ability to manage various device classes. Windows 10 runs on everything. So we have a, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a common management framework for desktop, mobile, IoT, a number of different spaces. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that, like, where my focus is, I want to drive costs down. So what all these internal enable, all these, all these benefits internal enables to do is to start chomping at that 56%. Like, I would love to get it down to zero, but I'll take 20%. So yeah, I'd make sure everybody, everybody in here has a little bit of job security. So as we move on and we look at kind of what enables modern management, so a show of hands, how many people in here are already using one of the things that are listed on this, on this slide? Congratulations, you are already on the road to modern management. The beauty about this journey is qu quite simple. A lot of the tenants and the themes that were established in traditional management carry directly over to model modern management. And we borrow a lot of the concepts there. And we'll dive into that a little bit later on. So just like traditional management, let's take a look at what the IT lifecycle for modern management lo looks like. Again, we start by acquiring Windows. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we ultimately, work, where we want to take this is we want to simplify acquisition of Windows with per user licensing. So what that means is Windows kind of moves to a subscription model. We looked at our cousins over in Office and saw there, it was like, hey, I can get an Office license and drag it and attach it to a user, and now I'm paying per cost, and I'm not buying like a 50,000 seat license when I only need 20,000 seats. You're optimizing your cost based on usage. That's the, yes, ring popped up. <laughs> That's my acquisition of my software. If I move beyond that and look at deployment, again, we want to get to this point where you're not having a team of high school kids sitting in a warehouse re-imaging all your machines that you just got from your OEM. Cloud-based provisioning. You saw some, some of the talks and content earlier, earlier this week, actually I think earlier today specifically, that talk about what some of the new functionality that we're building into the provisioning experience. What happens if we can move this to the cloud so you no longer have to actively re-image a device? You just take the device and your user logs in as up and running. From an identity stamp standpoint, we took all the power Active Directory and moved it to the cloud, or moved it to Azure with Azure Active Directory. And the next three components, analytics and management, security, and app management, are all about what are we managing on the device? Leveraging Windows Analytics to better understand how the device is being used. Leveraging Intune for your management. Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection for security and a comprehensive security management suite. And then, of course, from the app standpoint, Enterprise Store and Centennial for your Windows 32 applications. And of course, last but not least, we have to keep these things up to 
little bit too fast. Right. We need to keep these things up to date. So Windows Update for Business, into managing, your, into managing how you're rolling out updates to your apps. And updates, we also mean OS updates as well. The, the ability to configure rings, <coughs> excuse me, configure rings so you can easily roll out, different, roll out builds as they come out and validate them before you roll them out to your entire organization. So we're on this journey to modern management. We talked about so far how we think about traditional management, how it fits into the, your, the overall management life cycle. We talked about some of the components there. We talked about what modern management means to us and kind of our North Star as we think about this space. So let's change gears on our car <laughs> and talk about the journey itself. Now I mentioned some of the components earlier. If we take that and kind of flip that on its axis and look at some of the areas that those fall in, it pretty much boils down to, <clears throat> excuse me, the seven that you see on the page. And whether it's traditional management or modern management, there are sets of options that fall in each of these bucket, buckets. For example, we talked about identity, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory. Policy management and settings, group policy or, M or MDM policies via OMA-DM. Management agent on the box, SCCM, or the inbox MDM client. For each of these key areas, there's a traditional story and there's a modern story. But the really cool thing here is that for a lot of them, you can mix and match. You can have AAD, AD and AAD play nice in the same sandbox. And we'll look at that shortly. So now that you have all these options, let's say, you know, we can make half some of these play nice together. The question ultimately comes down to, at least for me, is how do you make a decision? I have all these options, so how do I choose what to go with? What's my strategy? For those who remember, like, some old school sprites commercials, there's a little penny. What's my motivation? So what's your motivation to go to modern management? In what direction do you want to go? So for this talk, we're going to focus on two areas. We'll start with identity, and then we'll look at settings and configuration for on device. So let's talk about identity and membership. This is critically important, because if you can't establish your user's identity, you can't ensure that the right person has the right access to the right files or the right data or, ha or has the right configuration settings on their device. So you start with a simple question. Is the device primarily on the go? Is it a mobile phone? Is it a Surface? Is it going to be sitting under somebody's desk? If it isn't on the go, chances are you can get away with just doing traditional management. Domain join plus SSCM, what you're used to today. If the device is already, if the device is primarily on the go, like a laptop, for example, it may already be domain joined. If it is, you can continue to let it go with traditional management. My laptop at work is, well, my other laptop at work is domain joined. And it's just managed traditionally. There's no change in what exists today. Now, the interesting thing, it gets more interesting when it's not domain joined. And then you have a question. Is this a corporately owned device or is it a BYOD? If it's corporate owned, then you have modern management using Azure Active Directory join, excuse me, Azure AD join and MDM. Leveraging your cloud domain assets, <coughs> excuse me, plus MDM management to enforce policies on that device. And if it's BYOD, you can still use the same NVM policies on the exact on, on that device, but instead of doing a DJ, just fork account joint. This provides you the flexibility to manage both corporately owned devices and BYOD devices with the same policy set via MDM. Let's talk about settings and configuration. Again, once you have identity set up, the question is, what is that user actually able to do on the device? And how do you ensure that they have the right settings and policies and configuration packages 
so that they're up and running, like your favorite line of business that pops up on the start, on the start menu. Again, we start again with this, this device domain joined. If it is, fairly straightforward. But if it's not, it then comes down to how you want to manage that device. So I saw a few people, the gentleman in the black shirt back there with the glasses on, had the opportunity to walk through all of the Internet Explorer policies. I'm picking on him because that's actually one of, the, one of the customers that we work with. Shared a story around with Internet Explorer 11. They actually spent three days going through all 1,667 policies. It's a lot of time. GPs, feature-based. If you need that granular control, traditional management is, what you, is the direction you need to go. You can customize it to your heart's content. There's a, a really large amount of permutations of different policy sets that you can do. If you don't need that granular level of control and you're just really worried about getting your end users up, up, up and running, ensuring lighting up certain scenarios, kiosks, for example, configuring your start menu, using more scenario-driven policies as we're introducing with MDM, then you want to go the modern management route. MDM plus work account, MDM plus domain join. This is the route that you want to go because it's going to provide that lightweight management and a, cons a consistent experience across all, all Windows 10 devices. So now we get to my favorite part. So I've talked a lot thus far around how we think about management, how we think about modern management, how we think about traditional management. And when I shared, when I shared this content with some of the folks on my team earlier, they're like, you know what, Dean? You need to add some scenario-specific guidance. Because if I was in your shoes and I came to this talk, you're talking about a road, but you're not talk, telling me how to navigate down that road. So let's look at a few scenarios. We had a couple great conversations with customers at Ignite last year and over the course of the last eight, well, continuously having a lot of great conversations with customers and came up with these six kind of core scenarios that folks tend to gravitate to. I'm doing a new deployment. I'm going from an on-prem environment to a hybrid deployment. I'm starting with Office 365 and I want to figure out how can I leverage my investments in O365 to move to modern management of my endpoint devices. We have customers that are starting with managing phones only. I want to figure out how can I use this to manage desktops. I'm completely on-prem to the cloud or even I'm completely on-prem and want to move to a modern on-prem store. Just want to get a show of hands. Is this fairly exhaustive? What am, is, am I missing a scenario here? Anybody? Don't be shy. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the gentleman in the front mentioned that when you have a, a merging and acquisition scenario where you have one company, possibly the acquiring, excuse me, the acquiring company is not using modern, modern management, but the company that's being acquired is, how do you rectify the two? We, actually, we can cover that because it actually dovetails into, I'm going to say on-prem and hybrid. So for, the, for each of these scenarios, we're going to talk about a mythical customer based on real customer engagements that my team is currently, currently working with. We'll look at what their drivers are. We'll look at what, why they want to move in this direction and the solutions that we recommend. So let's start with a new deployment. We got a small tech startup, about 50 employees or so. It's a mix of BYOD and corporately owned devices, super mobile workforce. This is the type of team where half of the employees are out sitting in the park with their with their Wi-Fi hotspot doing work under a tree. Because it's sunny outside in Seattle in the summertime, you really don't want to be in the office. From a goal standpoint, they want to enable access to SharePoint and Office 365 and start to leverage single sign-on abilities for some of their key line of business apps. And most importantly, for the BYOD devices that are 
being used in the environment. We want to make sure that they can protect their data and enable remote wiping capabilities. Decision drivers are primarily cost and ease of use. This company does not want to add a significant amount of overhead to their IT budget. They just want something that's simple and just works. So from a solution standpoint, we're going to recommend that they use Azure Active Directory for identity and authentication, Intune for device management, which provides them a great simple cloud-based solution, a single pane of glass for managing their both identity and devices. And the cost is per device. They bring somebody online, they pay for the extra device. If somebody leaves the company, they just stop paying for the extra device. So they have the ability to grow and shrink on demand, in a sense. Let's talk about on-prem to hybrid. So we have an automotive company, about 200,000 plus employees. Everything's currently on-prem. Massive infrastructure investments over the X amount of decades that that company's been around. And they want to move to the cloud. They want to enable access to Office 365, or the cloud service, Visual Studio, for some of their incident tracking. And what is driving the decisions are primarily access to those cloud services. They want to be able to enable their workforce to be functional off campus. And also looking to test the waters with, that, with Azure. And ultimately, from a security posture, they want to move away from physical smart cards. They want to leverage two-factor authentication. They want to leverage biometrics. They want to leverage Windows Hello. They want to leverage the, the entire security story for, Win, for Windows 10. So let's look at what we're going to do for this company. So they already have their on-prem experience, you know, SCCM configuration manager, plus on-prem AD, GP, GBP, managing the domain joint device. Moving to a hybrid model, it's fairly straightforward. There's this beautiful thing called Azure AD Connect, which will sync your identity source between both the cloud and on-prem. And then they can add Intune for that management capability. So when a mobile device or a new device comes online, they can simply AD join that device, the identity sync between the on-prem and, on and cloud, <coughs> excuse me, and can leverage Intune for management of that device. AED is also going to be able to provide the authentication for the online services. And they can then start to take advantage of Password for Work for stronger two-factor authentication. Now, to your question earlier about the acquisition scenario, I see it as an extension of this quite simply because, let's say, for example, the company that's being acquired may already have an AED instance. You can federate the two and use AED Connect to sync both of those, excuse me, sync both of those instances, so now you can leverage their existing infrastructure as kind of the cloud arm of your on-prem infrastructure. It's one way to do it. I'm sorry, say it again. Mm -hmm. So the question is, AAD, is, A, is Azure AD Connect with directory sync? I believe so. We have a tendency to rebrand a lot of things in-house, but it's, it's the same, same idea. We want to make sure that the identity story that you have on-prem matches the identity, the, excuse me, the identity store you have on-prem matches the identity store that's in the cloud. So let's take a look at starting with Office 365. How many people in here are using Office 365 today? Yay. My sales team is doing a good job. <laughs> So we have a retail and entertainment company based in Southern California, about 50,000 employees, and has an existing Office 365 deployment. Their big thing here is they want to enable a line of business apps to be accessed from outside, outside the corporate network. And also, they start to see this rise of prevalence of, BY, of BYOD devices, and they want to make sure they have great support for them. Funny thing about this specific company, their current solution for providing corpnet access while off campus is literally issuing a hotspot to the workers that need off-campus work. 
that hotspot mirrors the internal Wi-Fi network. So when they take their laptops home, laptop sees the hotspot and thinks that, they're, thinks that they're in the office, but they're actually at home. Massive amount of hardware overhead, a lot of extra costs per user associated with that. The decision drivers here are, again, this whole, be, this whole ability to work anywhere and being able to sort out, sort out the BYOD story. So again, they already have an on-prem solution. They're leveraging that AAD, AAD sync and using, ID, using Azure Active Directory for ID and authentication for Office 365. To enable mobile device management, it's as simply, simply as turning on Intune. And now this new device is leveraging the existing AD infrastructure they have for Office 365 and is able to be managed by Intune. Now we have, there's a couple customers that we know that are starting with mobile, whether it's managing iOS devices or managing Android devices or hopefully managing Windows devices, shameless plug. And they have an on-prem infrastructure and a mobile and an infrastructure that's designed to manage these devices. So the financial services company based in the UK, about 200,000 200, employees worldwide, combination of corporately owned desktops managed with GP and the influx of BYOD devices that are currently managed via MDM. Their goal is to have a consistent management story for all devices in the estate. They want a single pane of glass that lets them manage everything. Want to cut down on this, I have to go here to do this configuration, I have to go here to do another configuration. And ultimately want to move away from SCCM to endpoint management. They want to dump, not, dumb it down isn't the right word, but want to simplify and realize the cost savings that are associated with a more simpler IT infrastructure, which is the decision drivers. So the beautiful thing about when you're starting with mobile is guess what? All the stuff is already in place. There's really nothing extra that you have to do. If you're already managing mobile devices with Intune or a third-party MDM ISV, there's no additional work to manage Windows, Windows 10 devices, period. All of, our major ISVs have, all of the major MDM ISVs already have support for Windows 10. So you can continue to use your investment in your Active Directory for identity for those new devices. Only thing you'll need to do is set up a couple MDM profiles for your new Windows devices to make sure you have the right policy set. But there's minimal additional work here from an infrastructure standpoint. So let's have a little bit of fun with this, though. So I'm starting with mobile, have my existing mobile device. What happens when I add a new device? I just enroll it, and I'm good to go. There's no extra work here. Now, my favorite scenario of all is I'm going, like, I'm going all in. I started with on-prem, and I, want to get, I just want to take everything to the cloud. I want to destroy my data centers, or rather stop paying for my data centers and start paying a subscription-based service. So we have a municipality, small city government, about 25,000 employees. Everything is currently on-prem. Their goal is to migrate to the cloud and realize the cost savings, with, cost savings and efficiencies with moving to the cloud. Enable, enable a set of employee self-services, and actually look at a line of business apps that run anywhere on any device. The decision driver actually has, happens to be Office 365. Cost reduction, standard, standardization across city departments. We don't need parks using a different system than sanitation, using a different system than treasury, using a different system than the folks who process parking tickets. We want to get everybody on the same platform. So you can just write one app that runs on any Windows 10 device using our UAP, excuse me, using the UAP platform. So the solution is ultimately as such. You take your on-prem that you already have today. You add AAD and Intune and leverage your Azure AD Connect to make sure that your identities, identities are synced up. 
when new devices come online, most folks in here are probably on a 18 to 36 month refresh cycle for their hardware. You shaking your head? Okay. So server is a little bit of a different story, because but well, we can talk about that a little bit later if there's questions. There will be a, a good amount of time for questions, so hold them to the end. New devices that are coming online, just plug them straight into the cloud. AED, Intune, good to go. But the question ultimately becomes, what happens to your existing devices? So our recommendation here is, as end users get their devices replaced, pull them out of your domain join, get them plugged into AED and Intune, and now that user is on the cloud. Over time, if, you know, to the gentleman's example, it's on a three-year three -year hardware refresh. You can accelerate that or just wait till your existing hardware falls out, of, falls out of support and you're already gonna be replacing it. Over time, you'll see that your usage on SCCM and usage of your on-prem AD will gradually shift over to AAD and Intune. Then at a certain point, you can deprecate your on-prem infrastructure. This allows you to go at the pace that's comfortable for your company or comfortable for your, your risk management folks to move to modern management. And last but not least, on-prem to modern on-prem. We do know that there are certain estates and certain companies that require everything to be on-prem or geographically co-located with where the workplace is. So in this case, we have a government entity, over half a million seats, wow. Yeah, over half a million seats and everything's currently on-prem. Their goal primarily is to simplify management of their endpoints while maintaining their current intranet network. Cost motivators, decision drivers are, again, reducing that management complexity and leveraging that cost savings when you don't have to support multiple things and have a single, single pane of glass for managing your endpoints. Solution in this case is actually to leverage a third-party MDM, MDM solution. I call this out to point out that Windows works with anything. MDM is a standard, and if you leverage a third-party MDM solution, you can still manage Windows. Our first party Intune doesn't have an on-premise offering, but you can still manage Windows and move to modern management that way. So this is essentially the road to modern management. You have a lot of options. You know, as we saw earlier, for most of the folks that when we looked at the things that power modern management, there's a lot of, a lot of those components you're already using today. All these options are designed to work together with both Microsoft and non-Microsoft products. And I definitely encourage you to, to do two things. One, pick the right deployment story that works for you and go ahead and get started. If you wanna start with Office, you can. If you wanna start with what's your possible existing investments in managing BYOD mobile devices, you can do that too. If you wanna go all in and move to the cloud, let me know, because I wanna hear about your experience. But the key takeaway here is that get started today. Modern management is where Windows is going long term, and we want to help you get there. So what's next? Today we kind of we focus a lot more on the client side experience. On Thursday, we're going to have what you can think about as part two of this talk, which is going to focus on the server side. SCCM, Intune, I'm going to be joined on stage by one of my colleagues, Jason Givens, who actually runs our Intune and SCCM teams, to talk about what does that side of the story look like as you're thinking about your move to modern management? And second to last but not least, my, my, my chief of staff would get mad if I didn't put this up here, the Windows Insider program. A lot of the work that we're doing, especially as we look at how, to, how we're paving this road to modern management, is based on feedback from you. If you're not a member of the Windows Insider program, I strongly encourage you to become part of the community like, that's feedback that gets directly back to engineering. Want to find out more information around what our MDM story looks like? Some reference links. This will be, the slide will be as part of the download, so feel free to not worry about reading through the eye chart of links. But there's a, there's a set of different resources that'll help you understand managing Windows 10 with Intune, managing Windows 10 with Configuration Manager. What does their WMI bridge give you? Give you? and the host of different options of managing Windows 10 that can help you 
start down that journey to modern management. And very last but not least, if you fill out surveys, I'm a glutton for feedback. But with that, questions. Excuse me? So the question was, how, how come I didn't mention MAM in this session? Ex MAM is something that we are definitely interested in. We're actually actively looking into building out our, building our great MAM support for Windows 10. Unfortunately, I just don't have an announcement or just directly related to MAM today, but I do encourage you to stay tuned. So the question was, is there a way to automate moving from domain join to Active Directory? Today, no. You, you mentioned uh, group policies aren't going away, right? Anytime soon. Okay, so can, we, can I manage any device with the same way that I could manage, with, uh, manage my workstations with group policies or GPOs? Well, the, chal you? So the challenge you're gonna run into is that mobile devices don't support group policy. So when you say manage any device the same way you manage your workstations with a GP, it's kind of impossible because you can't manage a phone with a group policy. That said, if as you move, again, the whole, one of the virtues around modern management is that you manage your phone, you manage your desktop, you manage any of your Windows 10 devices with the exact same policy set. There's some exceptions for mobile specific and desktop specific, but it's still the same policy set across all the devices. Okay, thank you. Cheers. At the same time? No. Yes. Sorry, the question was, can I do both group policy and MVM management at the same time? The answer to that is no. You can manage different devices from differently, but you're not gonna be able to do a desktop with both MVM and GP at the same time. The clients will fight and GP will win. Sir? Uh, yes, if you currently have in your traditional uh, client management system a policy of not letting users run with admin rights, mm -hmm. can you replicate that in the modern management uh, scenarios? Not using users. When you say roam, what do you mean? Well, I mean, we take away the, the user's ability to be admin. Right. On the Windows device. So, are you asking, can you be modernly modernly managed? Is that a thing? Yeah. Can, can you be, be modernly, modernly managed, managed in the standard user? Rights. Yes. Because what can what we can do is part of the enrollment and provisioning process. And that'll run as an admin process, and then your user will be just a standard user on the device. Okay. Cool. Additional questions. Cool, well, I'm gonna hang out for at least the next 20, 30 minutes or so. Folks wanna come up and ask any sidebar questions, but I do appreciate you taking the time to join this session, and I look forward to hearing about your story as you move down the road to modern management.